All right, guys, what we have here is a Craftsman snow blower. Um, it's sold by Sears, so I don't even know how old it is. I'll have to look at the numbers on the engine to, to find out the age of it. But it is an older one that belongs to uh, my church, and we want to fire it up just to get ready for winter time. and it is leaking fuel all over. And the other thing I noticed is the kill switch is not in place but you can just see right here the gas is just dripping out of the carburetor um it, it really hasn't seen that much use the skid plates are in in uh, real good shape down there the tines are are good they don't even look beat up or hardly even used at all so my understanding is is uh it sat in the shed for years and years maybe used once or twice uh snow service has uh come around and did most of the snow so anyway, let's jump into this, see if we can get this carburetor fixed, get the uh, kill switch back on, and get this thing in service, because I do believe it's supposed to snow in a couple of days. And if you didn't know, uh, on, on snow blowers, just like boat motors, you don't see air cleaners on them, because with the snow, it's, it's, uh, all the dirt is really settled to the ground under the snow, so you really don't even need them. So let's dig into it. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to get this carburetor off. Um, I did put some gas in the tank and it started running right out. So let's start with the carburetor. That's usually the most common areas, and then we'll just go through the rest of the machine and uh, assess it and see how it is and do a little service on it. And this knob here... I'm afraid if I try to get that off, that's going to, that's the key there. That should come right out. Yeah, there we go. All right. So, let's see if we can get that off. And the carburetor is looking a little bit on the dirty side, isn't it? And see here, the, that's the knob I took off right there. It just operates to, to choke. That's all that is. Throttles over here. This might be a little petrified. Oop, yeah. Didn't mean to knock you. Probably ought to just replace this fuel line when I have it off. Boy, you're just getting in the way. I'm hitting you. Now, should be able to get to that nut a little easier. Although, having said, we don't usually get much snow. We did end up getting about, I don't know, an inch last night. Try to work around you here, you're getting in my way a little bit. I'm gonna work this one out. See if I can get her out with my hand now. And I'm sure I'm gonna drop that nut. Told you, but that's all right, just lead down top there. And get the other side off. Now this one is, uh, I'm not sure how old this is. I'm gonna have to look and see if I can find a date up on the uh, engine. But take note of what hole we have that in, so we can put it back in the same spot if you would. Actually, let's just, there we go. Set that right up there. There's two holes there. I ain't sure which one that came from. All right, let's take her over to the bench and uh, see what we have. She's a little bit dirty. Kind of expecting to see a little bit more, but nah, maybe not. All right, so let's dig into this thing, see how dirty it is. So first I'm going to take this and screw it in, get an idea how far it is. And she's crunchy. There's a half, one, one and a half. 
that seems about right. So, I'll go ahead and pop the bowl off. And this is actually the uh, the metering jet right here on the Tecumseh. I did look it up, and as far as I could tell, this snow blower is a um, was made somewhere's somewhere's between 2004. 2007 somewhere's in that range that bowl didn't even i think that was a problem right there look you can see our seal somebody was in this once before and our bowl seal is all cracked up and jammed up which has got a bit of dirt down in there too so in our flute And the needle is moving up and down in there. So let's get my little stubby fingers in there and try to pull it out. I gotta grab a little pair of pair of needle nose. In the meantime, I do have the ultrasonic heat ultrasonic. I can't even say it now. Ultrasonic cleaner is heating up. I think that's what I'm trying to say. And yeah, she's looking pretty dirty. Now, if you look at these um, Tecumseh's, okay? If you look at the seat right here, it's all metal. And what they do is they put a little rubber seat. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it sits down in there. To where you look at your Briggs, this, usually the tip of this is gonna be rubber. One way or the other, there's gonna be a little rubber in there to seal it. So we are gonna to have to pull that out and I am gonna to have to get a new one to uh, take care of that and I was kind of hoping to reuse some of this stuff but this is quite brittle and you can see it was damaged so I think that's what the main problem was and you do see some corrosion in here from that lovely gasoline we have with the ethanol in it so I will have to get something and pull that out usually just use a little paper clip um, what else we want to do we got a jet over here look we got a broken hose here and uh, I do remember seeing a hose hanging off the side come on you got her there we go and we'll take out some of these it's got a little spring so it's a, probably an idle circuit there we go that was just a half a turn. And when you do turn these in, you don't want to crank them down very much either. See, there's a little bit on the dirty side. Somebody has been in here before. That is quite obvious with the, uh, the damage to that seal. Yeah, see, a little dirty. Little on the dirty side. So let's pop this apart. <clears throat> Come on, maybe. <clears throat> there we go. Get her out. This is just a part of the choke housing, or uh, not the housing. Always choking all on it. And some support. <clears throat> Yeah, she's a little dirty. She needs a bath. And uh, I also noticed the uh, kill switch, the wire, where that key goes into the ignition, that is off. And I'm not quite sure how that fits back on there, to be honest with you. And the emulsion tube, I don't know. Try to give her a little push, but I don't know if we're going to get that out or not. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm not going to bother with it. I'm afraid I don't want to break it. Uh, hopefully, the ultrasonic cleaner will take care of that. Gather up some of these parts. There we go. And we'll go drop her in the ultrasonic cleaner. Let her get cleaned up a little bit.
All right, bath time, boys. Hopefully that plastic won't get damaged. We'll just let her cook for a little while. Give her about 20 minutes. Let's see how well she comes, cleans up. All right, we'll just let her cook. All right, what do you say we take a look and see how the carburetor's coming? And this uh, fluid I use in here, it's actually been in there quite a while. But that looks pretty good. I'll set her down right over there. And our float, fortunately, is floating, so that's good news. Doesn't seem to be any fluid in it. Then our bowl should be right there. Alrighty, soup is done. A uh, couple little nasties down in there. Have to clean them out a little bit. But other than that, I think she's pretty good. And if you're wondering what I use in the cleaner there for a cleaner, hey, where's my camera? It's just the uh, Gunk carburetor parts cleaner, that's all I use in it. But you do have to be a little bit careful because it is flammable and probably shouldn't really be using it in there, but I've not had a problem with it and it works very well. So let's get set up back over here and I'm gonna have to go pick up some parts and I'll be right back. All right, I did forget to take the little seal out for the um, seat needle and seat before I put it in the ultrasonic cleaner but I guess it's all right it looks pretty decent down in there I don't know how well this shows up but it is just a little tiny thing and on one end you can see I'm gonna drop it you can see it's got the ridges on it that faces down into the the um, slot there. This is the side that I'm grab the seat here. This is the side that the um, needle actually fits in, and that shuts off the fuel coming into your carburetor when the float bowl when the float uh, raises up. So I got to run down to the store get some new parts for it. We'll get a new one of them that'll come with the kit and. Uh, It'll only be a minute for you, so just hang tight and I'll be right back. All right, I did run out and I picked up a couple gaskets here. It has your bowl gasket, has a little seat for your needle, has a new needle in it. So that's really all I needed for it. So let's see if we can get this thing put back together and get it to run. Um, I did pull out the little needle seat in there and I do have to put the new one in. And they do make a tool for this. I don't have it but i just used the end of a drill bit or so as soon as i can get this opened up there we go yeah so there's your little seat i already showed you that already just want to make sure that end is dropped down in first Get it around there and just using a just clean it up a little bit using the end of my drill bit I'm just gonna that drill bit's a little dirty maybe I better clean it up a little bit more and get her seated down in there and that's good so she's just down in there um, Next thing, we got a new needle, and we just slide her on. Middle little clip, slide her in. Some of these, the older, um, the way they are now, you just have a piece there. You don't even have that metal clip on it. Grab a flute.
Come on now, it's my first time, I guess. And ease her on down in there. My pin. There is a little bit of gunk on the bottom of this flute. You can probably see it. But I'm not going to worry about it. It's not, not leaking. Get her all lined up. There we go. Make sure the needle's still in there doing its job. Now, if I turn it over, I shouldn't be able to blow through it. And I can't. And if I flip it, well, that was a little much. A little excessive. And if I flip it and let it slide down a little bit, I should be able to blow through. Yep, so that's good. All right, good, perfect. And next, the bowl gasket. You see how pliable that one is? This is the old one, it's petrified. And you see where it's been pinched, it's cracked. Um, it was hanging down inside the bowl. And really this was the main, main problem I believe. Although the inside was dirty, I think it still would have ran. And now our bowl. Get her lined up. Put this in, but I need a, my gasket. And that there is actually your jet. If you look, this little hole right here, that's actually what picks up your, your fuel and feeds it. And then your needle, the way it's on the taper, how high it goes up and down in there, is depends on... It, that is what, um, you know what I'm trying to say here. The taper on this, when you pull it back, it opens the hole up, you get more fuel. You pull it up, it closes it off a bit, and you get less fuel, so it leans it out. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't know if it made any sense. Just get that snug down here. Oops. That'll do it. Get our needle in. I'm gonna run us all the way down. That's in, so that's a half, one. Let's just leave it at that for the, for the moment. We'll get it on, get it adjusted. And then, our idle mixture. We'll do the same thing with it. Get it all the way in. <clears throat> and we'll just back it out. I think it was uh, not even a half a turn before, but I'm going to back it out. Let's say three quarter. Eh, we'll go one. We'll adjust it all and get it back on there. And now I just have, you know what I did not do, and you didn't remind me. All right, so I have no idea what I did with that part. Um, I'm not even sure it was in the package. Um, probably was, I probably just dropped it, didn't realize it, but I don't see it anywhere. So here is the old one, not in the best of shape. So it could leak on me, we'll find out. And if it does, I guess I'll just have to spend another $7 on a kit and get that part, right? But hopefully this one won't leak. All that does is it uh, goes up in here and seals. But I'm not going to give that, I don't know. Something tells me I probably ought to just go buy another one. That one don't look too good. But... We'll try it. If it works, great. And if not, I'll go get another one. So we have that in. 
I'm going to go half, one, one and a half. Okay. And now we'll slide this back together. Get it all lined up. That little seal there, that should be uh, easy to replace if it does leak, so it's not going to be that big of a deal. There we go. And I think I mentioned this snow blower. I think it's somewhere around 2004, 2007, somewhere in that range. I don't really know for sure. It has this Cumsy five horse motor on it. I think it's a 20. 23 inch on it auger so let's head on back over to the machine and install this and see if she leaks or not all right let's see if we can get her in here um i do remember the rod was through the outer hole on there and it should be through the lower one on there that's good the gasket's already on there. And I gotta get behind here. Get our nuts and bolts back out. And just get her started a little bit. And I got a cable on this side that's not allowing me to get behind it and push that other nut out. Grab a screwdriver. Yeah, sometimes, I don't know why it is, but the simplest things seem to be hard. I don't really know why. But, I guess that's just part of life, isn't it? Alright, I think I got her started. There we go. All right, that's good there. So, get our fuel line on. All right, so this hose was broke off, just hanging down there. And that goes to your primer bulb up on the top. So we will just shorten it a hair and reattach her right there. Now, I do believe I can throw some gas in her and get her to start. And yeah, we'll give her a little drink of gas, get her going. I'm not going to put much in there in case it is leaking. Probably should have put a shut-off valve on it, but I didn't. I don't know why. I think they should all come come factory with a shut off valve personally. Because I'd like to, you know, if you're putting it away for a period of time, and we're doing the winter or whatever, I'd like to uh, shut that off and then run the fuel out of the carburetor. All right, now, do we have any leaks? I'm not feeling anything leaking. So that's a good sign. Alrighty, shouldn't be the kill wire, and yeah, let's see what happens. I wonder, maybe I didn't put enough gas in it. Let me put a little more in. We'll give her a full throttle. No leaking yet? Nothing dripping.
All right, try that. Still had to choke on. So you ready, tidy? Which way am I going here? All right. Forgot to take choke off. How many guys sitting there yelling at me? All right. Now what? Hmm. Uh, let's give a full choke again. See what happens now. Oh, you know what? Don't touch the uh, exhaust. It's hot. Just saying. You know what? Instead of all this, adds an electric start. I'm going to get an extension cord. All right, so now we got an electric start on it. Let's give it a try. She is starving for fuel. Put my little screwdriver. All right, go one. I'm gonna go two on the fuel circuit, and that some of that in there, the uh, passages could still be quite a bit um, gummed up. To be honest with you.
right, I think I'm just gonna leave it like that. Um, I think she's gonna work all right. Starter don't sound the best, does it? A couple other things I'm gonna look into. Want to uh, do an oil change on it, and probably should have checked the oil before I ran it, but I didn't. And also the uh, look at the drive system underneath. Take a look at that. See um, if that needs any attention or not. And now for a little oil change. <laughs> I don't see no metal down in it, but then again, I don't think it's got very many hours on it either. It does look dirty though. I don't see no rainbow collars in there or nothing, no metal shavings. Alright, and now for a little bit of uh, Traveler Street 30 weight oil. It'll make her nice and happy. Uh, looks like I might have put just a tad too bit in there. Tad too bit much. Yeah, we're going to leave it. It's not enough, it's going to hurt it. You say we start it up one more time real quick. Hopefully it won't vibrate you around. And this time we're going to use the um, pull cord. Prime. Choke off. Hmm, not liking that. I can't remember what was choke on, choke off now. Let me look. Uh, let's choke off. Let's choke on. Yes. Yeah. Ten minutes, I thought it did. I thought this was going to start up. Plug the cord back in. try that again with the pull cord. Alright. 
So I think next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this plug out. I'm going to take a look at that plug. See the little carbon dot. She's a little bit carbon up, so let me, um, I'm just going to hit that on the wire wheel. I don't think I have another one of these plugs. See if that makes a difference. I cleaned up a little bit. The gap don't really look too bad on it. So, let's see if that makes a difference. But, uh, I think she is a little bit low on gas, too. But, gravity fed, that should feed down to the carburetor without a problem. <clears throat> I have to excuse my sniffles, it is winter time. You get cold. And let's give her that exhaust is still hot. I'm telling you, don't touch it anymore. Don't listen. starting it again with the pull cord choke without touching the exhaust So I want to go with that plug being the problem. Cleaned it up, seems to be a little better. So I'm going to move on to the bottom end. Uh, that'll give the engine a chance to cool down and then we'll try to do a cold start with the pull cord again just to verify that we're okay with it. All right, so we got it up in its maintenance position here. So let's pop this bottom cover off and take a look, see what we have underneath. Because it should have chains in it. And I just just want to check them out, make sure they're not uh, make sure they're not um, getting rusted up. And it should pop right off. Alright, this one here uses a belt. It is not using a chain, so that's good. No change to worry about. And if you look at this disc here, when you select the gear drive up on the top there, it moves this wheel. This is the actual drive wheel for your wheels. You can see them spinning. And the farther out on this disc, this is actually your drive. The farther out on this disc, the farther it takes to go around, so it moves faster. You move this into closer to the center then that's your low speeds if you put it on the other side then you're actually would be going in reverse um, I'm not sure if this one does have reverse to be honest with you I didn't notice but uh, some of them do so everything in there actually looks pretty good I'm not going to touch it I'm just going to button her back up but little dead friend there but uh, I'm just going to put the put her back up on it and finish putting her back together and I think uh, we're going to call it good Zip it back in. All right. So now I just need to move you out of the way. Now I just have one more lid cover to put on. 
So I don't know if you can see it that well, but that's what I just snapped in. Plastic clips. Key, kill key comes in. Right here. You stick the key in here. It runs beside it. And I don't know if you can see it on camera, this little wire here. It should be touching the metal, but with the key in, it pushes it out so it's not touching nothing. It's just plastic key. When the key's out, that touches the metal, and it's supposed to ground the, the spark and kill the engine. And that was not attached. So, if I can just manage to get everything lined up here, just so. All right, we'll go with that. And I'm not too sure that that key, that ground, I think I mentioned it, yeah, I did. That that ground wire is uh, probably broken somewhere. All right, I'm gonna stick the key in. I do have one more little nut right here. And again, if you notice, there's no air cleaner. And in fact, usually when you look at an engine, you got the exhaust on one side, the carb on the other. But it isn't so with these. Oops, I dropped it. All right, guys, it's actually the next day, and it is only in the 20s, so it's very cold. Figured this would be a perfect opportunity for a cold start to make sure it starts okay with the uh, pull cord. So let's see if she'll start up. We can get our choke on, full throttle, and uh, place your wagers. How many tries do you think it's going to take for it to start? Well, Really? Had to be a smarty pants. Maybe I need to let it warm up a little bit before I engage the auger. Why it's thawing. I guess it's just cold. That's my guess.
Alright, so I'm going to let it warm up for a minute or two before I try that again. Let me know if that order is turning. I think we have a, you know, I see a little ice back there in the back. I think that auger's just uh, frozen in there. I tried to, tried it out on a little bit of snow. But it, uh, Picked up more mud than anything, and I think that's what we're jamming on. I think I flooded it when I tilted it back. I can smell some gas. All right, let it set for another minute. And this is supposed to be a quick five minute exit on the uh, video. Ain't working out that way, is it? Dog's just gonna come out, start it up, load her up and take her back. Yeah, I'm gonna pull that plug out because I'm smelling gas. I think I flooded it. It's quite cold outside. Hands are a little freezing. You know, and I never tightened that up, did I?
All right, so that's another good lesson for you. When you use your snow blower and you put it up, make sure you clean the ice and snow out of the auger or it's going to freeze it up like I just did it. All right, so the motor's fine. I think I just flooded it when I tilted it back. That's it. It's fine. It starts fine. Um, so I'm going to call that it for this, this video. Load this up, take it on back to the church. All right, real quick one more time. Let's, uh, let's start it up by hand. There you go. Yeah, so she was just flooded when I leaned it back. And don't let your auger freeze up. Please hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you all the next time.